Welcome to These Are the Blades of Our Lives, the figure skating show where I talk to you about figure skating like it is drama for our mamas. And on today's episode, I am doing predictions. The season is underway with both the Junior Grand Prix and the Challenger Series going at the same time. And so I wanted to do some prediction of how I think these events will turn out starting out with the Junior Grand Prix, which will be in Osaka. I always love whenever figure skating events take place in Japan. The audience is so educated, so warm, so inviting, so loving. I feel like I have a great time watching the skaters. I feel like the skaters have a great time in Japan. So I'm glad to see this Grand Prix in Osaka. So starting right off with the men, for me, the top five, based on what we've seen so far in competition from last season, gold, I'm going to give to Shunsuke Nakamura. He's got a triple axel. He has a quad. Whether he could land them or not, that remains to be seen. However, he does have the tech power over everyone else in the field. So if he can get his jumps, I could see this being an easy one for him. In second place, I'm going to put Zhao Zheng. The Chinese team is really building up. I feel like China did what the U.S. should have done, which is they forgot about the seniors and they started investing in their novice and in their juniors. I have been seeing a lot of the competition that China is doing internally, and they are trying to build themselves a team for 2026 you could see the effort that's being put in it a lot of their young skaters the young women the men the pairs the the ice dance they're trying to build themselves a complete team and so i feel like some of the junior men who are coming out of china might surprise us and so for that reason alone i'm putting zio jeng in second place and third place, I'm putting the second Japanese um, young men in this field, and that's Sergo Tachi. He's got some really nice jump. He's still growing. He's still maturing. But he has that nice Japanese technique. He's got soft knees. He goes straight up in the air. Sometimes his jumps are not always landed, but when they are, they're really nice to see. So I would have him rounding out my podium. Um, in fourth place, I have Masaya Mishima, another up-and-coming young Japanese skater with sound, basic, good foundation. But whether his jumps will be there on the day of the competition remains to be seen. And then rounding out my top five, I have Francois Pitot from France. A very nice skater, and he's having a very good season. He may actually end up higher than I have him, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, then we go to the ice dance and junior. I feel like the ice dance is pretty predictable for this competition. I think the Americans, um, Lee um, Nasset and Artem Makalov, they should easily win their second Grand Prix. I would put Selena Fragi and Jean Hans for Knox in second place. They won silver at their last Grand Prix. I think this will be their second silver. Whether it will be enough for them to make the Grand Prix final remains to be seen. But I see them taking the silver here. Um, the bronze, I'm giving to the Canadians. Um, Chloe Nguyen and Brendan Jiang. Again, they took bronze at their last competition. I think they're going to take another bronze at this competition. So I feel like the top three are basically going to be a repeat of what we had before. Um, in fourth place, I want to put the little Japanese team. I'm a very big fan of this team. And that is Sarah um, Kishimoto and Atsuhiko Tamura. I'm putting them in fourth place. 
I really like this young team. They have something to them that's special, and I feel like they're going to grow. And then wrapping up my top five will be the team from Israel, um, Elizabeth um, Tachenko and Alexei Kilikov. This team is all about the drama, especially her. They are about the drama. They live for the drama. And I'm really looking forward to see them um, do the 80s because I feel if anyone can be dramatically 80s, it's going to be them. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then, of course, the marquee event, the creme de la creme, the women. My prediction is pretty standard on, on what's to be expected. I feel like Mal Shimada should easily win this. I have seen some of her comp um, preseason competition. And yes, she has grown. Of course she's grown. She's not taking puberty blockers. She's not taking hormone suppressors. Even when you take the puberty blockers and the hormone suppressors, it's still really hard to fight puberty. People still grow. So imagine someone who's not taking any of that. Of course she's going to have a natural puberty growth. Now, if she was with a better coach or a better coaching team, what they would do is they would take out the triple axle, they would take out the quad, they would give her the time to adjust to her new body so then she can get used to her triples and then go back to the triple axle and go back to the quad once she's gotten a handle on her body. But she's with Shimada, and Shimada is another, is like a Japanese version of Iteri. They don't really care about their skaters. So now she has this program with a quad axle that is completely off-centered because she's working with a brand new body and a quad toe loop that her body cannot fully rotate in the air because, again, she is taller. She's got more muscle mass. And what her body was used to do at, like, a tiny little 70, 85 pound, her body cannot do now with a fully, you know, teenage body, but they're going to make her do it anyways. But despite the quad and the triple axle not being quite right, the rest of her jumps looked really good. Actually, what really made me sad from the competition that I've seen her compete in is her loss of joy. Last season, she looked like she loved finger skating. There was so much joy, so much light, so much spirit to her skating and this season so far I have not seen that I have not seen her enjoying herself she doesn't seem as fast as she used to be she doesn't seem as light and I cannot help but make a comparison to Moran Honda who also was a Shimada skater and she managed to kill the joy for Moran Honda for a long time I'm really worried that now with her hitting puberty and the changes in her jumps, that the joy for skating is not where it needs to be. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope she comes out on home ice and she is as light and as fast as she has ever been. But I am putting her in for the win here. In second place, I'm putting um, Akura um, Kushida. This skater has really good jumping technique. She goes really straight up in the air and lands really soft into her knees. If she can get all her jumps together, I, I'm giving her the silver for now. But you never know what could happen. Now, rounding out the podium is He Su Han. Oh, she was in second place last week at her Grand Prix. Unfortunately, that free program got away from her. I feel like that is going to either motivate her or that's going to get her going down a spiral. I hope it's the opposite. It motivates her. She comes, she fights in the, um, the short program to get into a good position, and then she comes and she has a good free program. That way she can get herself together for like Japanese, for um, South Korean junior nationals because she is a very beautiful skater nice packaging nice deep knees but the confidence was shaken last week i don't know if she's gotten it back then in fourth place i'm putting yo tagaki this is an up-and-coming young japanese skater we have not seen a lot from her but i have a lot of faith in the japanese technique their jump technique their basic skating skills and i feel like this could be a good outing for her 
In fifth place, I'm putting the American um, Mia Kalen. She has a quad. She doesn't have good skating skills. Her technique is really under-rotated, sometimes pre-rotated. Her packaging is not great. I feel like because her technique is not great, when her jumps fails, she's got nothing else to fall back on. She doesn't have the musicality. She doesn't have the speed. She doesn't have the spins. So I feel like she's a skater that is going to be very difficult for her to get on that podium unless other skaters make a lot of mistake. Because I'm not even going to ask for the U.S. Figure Skating Federation to step in because they never do. They never help. They never do anything. So I'm not even going to ask. But if somebody within her camp was to get her better packaging, was to be like, forget about the quad. Let's get you some good jump technique. Let's get your triple lutch, your triple flip, your triple style. Let's get those jumps solid. And then once you have the basic, we'll come back to the quad. If they could do that for her, she could progress. She could get on the podium. But because they're so focused on her getting the quad and they're letting everything else go, I don't see a lot of potential for her at the moment. And then rounding up my top six is the young Chinese Ru Cheng Tong. I really like this young skater. Like I said, the, the Chinese are really investing in their novice, in their juniors to build towards 2026. And she is part of that group. Good extension, nice musicality, nice presentation. The jumps are coming together. They're coming together. You know, jumps with the Chinese skaters is always a problem, but it is coming together. And I am like really, really looking forward to see where the skater goes. All in all... I'm really enjoying the Grand Prix season. I'm really enjoying what the skaters are bringing. I hope all the skaters have clean, good performances. I really hope the judges do fair judging. I think that's the most important part is that the judges fairly score everything. But we'll have to wait and see. So from the Junior Grand Prix, we will be moving on to the Autumn Classic International. I am going to start off with pairs because pairs is building and I am so happy to see that. This is an easy podium for me as well because without a doubt, without any question, um, Rico Muha and Ryuchi Kihara should win this competition. They're healthy this season. They've been in Canada training. They should be in good shape. They're going to be on home ice. They're going to be motivated. The judges are going to be, you know, giving them those extra GOE. I, I, I want them to win because they're such a likable couple, and I think they're going to win. And of course, in second place is the diva, the one and only Diana Stiletto de Duke and Maxine Deschamps. Again, this should be an easy silver medal for them. I saw their program at um, one of the Canadian internal competition. They looked good. She looked amazing. They look good. And I feel like I don't know how close they will be to the Japanese, but I have them firmly in second place. In third place, I have Emmanuel Proof and Nicolas Nadeau. Again, I saw them at that same Canadian um, competition. And this team is starting to gel together. This team is starting to gel together. I feel like pairs in Canada is going to be so amazing for the next, you know, Olympic season. And I'm praying, I am praying that it is the Canadians that lead pairs at the next Olympic season. Because honestly, I pray as a human being that the war ends quickly. And when that happens, of course, Russia's gonna come back into competition, they're gonna come back into figure skating. 
for this reason, I want the Canadian pairs to be the ones leading. Because you know, if there is a Canadian pair and that Canadian pair kills it, and then the judges decide they're going to put a Russian in front of the Canadian pairs, if that Russian pair did not kill it, you know the Canadians will be the one to say, uh-uh, you're not doing that. We're not having that. Not in our house. We already know the Japanese, they have never protected their skaters. Hell, they had the one and only Yuzuru Hanyu, and they didn't protect Hanyu. So there's no way they're going to protect Riku and Ryuchi against the Japanese. However, the Canadians, the Canadians, mm -mm, not with their maple syrup, no siree, the maple country, mm-mm. They're going to tell the ISU about themselves. So I'm so happy to see how Paris is growing in Canada. Only because I am prepared for that drama. I need that drama. Let's see what happens. But yes, Emily, um, Emmanuel and Nicholas, they look so good. I feel like if they can have two clean program here, they can find themselves on the podium easily and... Um, and third place. And fourth place, I'm putting another young Canadian team. I'm putting um, Candice Dorinsky and Renee um, Iberil, Iberil. I'm putting them in fourth place. Again, they're part of that upcoming Canadian um, pairs that are just building. They don't have the extension, the lift, the throws, the jump but they are solidly working towards a good foundation. And then in fifth place, I'm putting the French married couple, um, Camille um, Kovalev and Pavel Kovalev. Again, I love to see a mature woman in figure skating. And she looks like she's in full control of herself, of her body. And so I really, really like to see that. She seems confident. They seem like they have a solid partnership. They don't always get the jumps together. They don't always get the throws. So I'm hoping they have a really good season because, like, it's going to be tough for them at European if they don't get it together right at the get-go. So that's my prediction for pairs. Then moving on to men. I mean, this should be an easy win for Ilya Melanin. For me, it's more about what choice did his coaching staff in his camp decide to do. Are they going to stick to form and try to go for the maximum number of quads? Or are they going to reduce the number of quads and try to make him a more complete skater, given the fact that he has been beaten by complete skaters with less technical components? That is what I'm wanting to see. Which way did his camp go? I also would like to see him have two clean programs here because he really struggles with having two clean programs. So I would like to see him start the season having two clean programs to set him up. Now, even though Ilya Malinin is going to win this, the one that I am really looking forward to see, of course, is the Kevin Amos. Always look forward to see Kevin Amos. Inventive, original, point of view, interesting, intricate. There is not enough word in the dictionary. My vernacular is too limited to express how much I enjoy Kevin Amos. He tends to have a very erotic, erotic season. Sometimes he's up, sometimes he's down. We don't know which Kevin we're going to get. Is he going to have a consistent season this season? We don't know. I always pray every season. I light all of the Dollar Tree candles that I could afford to buy to let Kevin have a good, consistent season. I pray this is a good start for him. I pray he gets his quad, the triple axel, and then he can bring out all of that artistic charisma charm that only he could do. Um, in third place, I'm putting Sota Yamamoto. Is he the most exciting skater in the world? No. But is he consistent? Yes, he is. He's going to give you that quad toe, triple toe every time. Is it the most difficult combination? No. But is it going to be clean? Is he going to get maximum GOE? Is he going to have some ballad and he's going to open his arm and dig his knees into the ice? Yes, he is. And you know what? Sometimes consistency is what you need to win the game. So I'm putting him in fourth place. 
I'm putting him in third place. In fourth place, I'm putting Boy Yang Jang. We love Mr. Spidey. He's coming back from injury. Again, he's building towards the Olympic. He doesn't have to come back all at once in a boom. He just needs to build. He is over there at the cricket club. He is there with Tracy. He is there with Brian. So we are hoping to see the skating skills improve. We're hoping to see him dig his knees into the ice. He already has beautiful jump technique. It's just the rest of it. We're hoping to see that grow. Um, in fifth place, I'm going to put the Italian Nicola um, Memola. This will be his second senior season because last season he did both senior and junior. And I think this season he's only doing the senior. So this will be his first concrete junior season. Again, Italy has an opening. Italy has an opening. I will not talk about the situation that created that opening because I'm going to make another video about that, the way I'll talk about it. But Italy now has an opening. And if the Italian men want to make a move upward, mobility is now possible. So if Nikolai can have a good outing here and continue to have a solid season, he's going he's gonna to give the Italian Skating Federation something to think about. Um, in sixth place, I have Wesley Chu, uh, the young Canadian champion, again, lovely skater and consistent skater, which is typical, I guess, right now for, Ita for the Canadian men. He could have a great program or he can have a complete meltdown. Don't know who we're going to have. Then, of course, we have Jimmy Ma, always entertaining, always memorable, again, inconsistent skater are we gonna have his best performance or a meltdown we just have to wait and see and fan favorite donovan carillo i am putting him in my top 10 he has been training i've been seeing him on tiktok and instagram the quads look good you know donovan is gonna give you face he's going to give you ice present he's gonna entertain you we just need him to do the jump so the whole package could be there. And then lastly, I will put um, Steven Gugolev. Again, he doesn't have the skating skills. He doesn't have the packaging. He doesn't have the musicality. He was a junior jump prodigy, but now he doesn't have the jumps. So it, it is what it is. I hope he has a better season this season than he's had for the past other season because it's been very difficult to watch him struggle. And I really want something. I really want him to have a good season to rebuild his confidence. Then for the Autumn Classic International Ice Dance prediction, guys, I have no idea. I don't know. I do not know how this is going to play out. I'm just going to tell you the people I like. And how I would like for it to play out. But I have no idea how it's going to play out. I would like to see Olivia Smart and um, Tim um, Dyke win. My girl Olivia put herself back together and is going another round. And I would like for her to be rewarded. I know this is a tall order. But listen, Marie France has been known to work miracles. As Barbara said, she has all of the judges. She could do this. It's not impossible. Speaking of Marie France, if you're pulling out, you know, miracles, I would also like the young um, South Koreans, Hai and Lim and Ye Kwan, to get the silver medal. You could do it. You could do it, Marie France. Barbara Fusapoli says you have all of the judges. Put them to good use. What? Uh, you guys know how much I love um, Lim. She is everything that I love about figure skating. She gives you face. She gives you extension. She gives you ice presence. She is here for it. I would love to see them win a silver medal to help build up their confidence. Um, I think this will probably be like a Marie France party. So I think the French team, um, Yevgenia um, Lopaparva and Jeffrey Brassard, they should be on the podium too. Whether they're like third or second, that remains to be seen. Then another Mali France team 
will probably be Holly Harris and Jason Chen. They have not had really good season. They're always falling. They don't tend to have clean programs. But hopefully this will be the season where they finally get it together. And then rounding up my top five, and I'm just randomly picking because I don't know. I really don't know. Let's go with um, Katrina Wolfskin, former partner of um, Jeff Jeffrey Chen and Dmitry Tarovsky. Let's let's say they'll be fifth. I, guys, I don't know. The only thing I know for sure is that I would like Olivia Smart and Tim um, Disky and Hannah Lynn and Yi Kwan to be on the podium. Everything else, I have no idea. Now, for the creme de la creme, our marquee event, our women's prediction at Autumn Classic International, Ah, I'm going to go with my gut feeling and not necessarily stats and facts. I'm going to put Kari Sakamoto in first place, but I'm going to put her in the lead by a very small margin. And right behind her, I'm going to put um, Monet Shiba. I love Monet Shiba. I think she is such a wonderful skater with so much potential. I think she could do wonderful things in skating. So I'm going to put her in the silver medal position, but very close um, to Kauri. In third place, I'm going to go bold. I'm going to go bold. I'm putting Kaya Rutter. This is the young lady that I think will probably be the Canadian national this season. I think um, Canada is in desperate need of more women skaters. They're in desperate need of a champion that can compete technically, as in have a solid triple-triple on the international circuit. And Kaya has that. She has the tech power. She doesn't have the packaging. She doesn't have the, the skating skills, but she does have the tech power. So I think Canada is going to push for her. So for that reason, I'm going to give her my bronze medal. Now I'm giving her my bronze medal by, by a very tiny margin because I also think Dabin Choi from South Korea also has a good chance of being on that podium. It depends on whether she can master her nerves and give us two clean program. Um, I also have in my top five um, Audrey Shen. A very lovely Karen Chen-like um, skater, of course, she's a Tammy Gamble girl, a lot of under rotation to be expected. Last, last year, U.S. figure skating destroyed her. Has she gotten her mental toughness back? Has she gotten her confidence back? All of these things will be a factor to how high she could finish. And then it depends on what kind of caller you have. Do you have a generous caller who's not going to call her under rotation? Or do you have a caller who's like, mm, I know you're a Tammy girl. I'm watching every jump and I'm calling every jump. We have to wait and see. Um, then I'm putting Justine um, Missalette, the other Canadian. She's got oomphy jumps, oomphy jumps, like girth to them. But it's like she doesn't always necessarily land her jumps. So we don't know what's going to happen. And then we have Aliska Brezanova. She's got the experience. So you never know. Sometimes, like I said, experience sometimes makes the difference. Because sometimes young skaters, the nerve, the competition, everything gets the better of them. But these experienced skaters, they're like, let me just do what I need to do. And sometimes that leads to surprising outcome. And then rounding off, I have Emmy um, Peltonen. Again, she's got the experience. You never know where a young skater might falter and a skater with more experience might just make it on there. So this was my, you know, little prediction for the Junior Grand Prix in Osaka as well as the 2023 Autumn Classic International. But you guys let me know. Who do you think is going to come out on top? And why do you think they're going to come out on top? Leave me a comment.